Okay, great. Looks like we are live. We're going to walk you through the low back pain blueprint, the exact step-by-step -step solution to resolving your low back pain for good, even if you've been diagnosed or if you currently have bulging discs, arthritis, or degenerative disc disease. Let's go ahead and get to the game plan tonight. So what's wrong with traditional treatment approaches? Why didn't it work for me? I went to the doctor. I did everything they said. I tried the stretches. I tried the exercises. And here I am still dealing with low back pain. Why is that? Is, is it just me? Is it my back? We'll dive deep into that. And my challenge for you to tonight is to rethink your low back pain approach. This is very thorough, one of the most holistic approaches yet you'll find. And it's really based upon our own concoction about what we've found working with people. This isn't textbook stuff. This is working with people in the trenches, figuring out and determining what is it going to take to help you feel good, um, not just for five weeks, but for forever. We want you to feel fantastic for the rest of your life. So we're going to walk you through exactly what we found has been most helpful. My name is Dr. Chad Coons. I'll be your host tonight. I'm CEO of Prime Movement and a sports physiotherapist. So what does the typical low back pain journey look like? Well, first you have a low back pain and soon enough it gets pretty bad. You're wondering, man, maybe something's really wrong in there. So you go get an x-ray. That's usually the first line of defense. They don't usually see anything. And then they go, well, you know, I guess it's time that you have an MRI. So we really take a look to see what the exact problem is. They probably find something. And I'll show you some data here in a second about why that is. But you go to your orthopedic doctor and they have a discussion. You know, you have a bulging disc. You have arthritis. You have so-and-so. And they give you options. Well, I can go in there and do surgery. We don't have to do that yet. You could try seeing, you know, a physical therapist. You could try seeing a chiropractor. Or heck, you might go home and say, well, neither of those are even working well for me, so I'm going to see if I can do this on my own. You start going through YouTube, which is a common search engine for that. And maybe it gets better. Maybe it gets a little bit better. Um, some of you, it gets a lot better, but then eventually comes back. Some of you, it never gets better in the first place. Maybe you have to try corticosteroids. You put uh, pain pills down your throat that you really don't want to. And then what happens? Pain comes back. And I will tell you right now, there's a very high recurrence rate for those who are having low back pain. And there's a reason for that. And what we're trying to do is stop this vicious cycle. Let's take care of this once and for all. And I will tell you right now, low back pain surgeries are not the answer. Roughly at the top there, you'll see 50% of the surgeries are successful. But if you have your second, your third, or your fourth, the statistics are not good, okay? The chances of you being successful with that are really not good. So my goal or goals for you tonight is to help save you from considering a low back pain surgery, help you rethink your back pain strategy and why what you've tried hasn't worked for you. And really, I want to educate you on what you need to do to get pain free. And it's, let's be honest, the x-rays, are they useful or not? Well, they can rule out really sinister pathology as we might call it. So if you have tumors, cancers, benign growths, they'll find that. Um, you might have a significant fracture from a car accident and so those two cases are useful, but other than that, they're not going to usually find anything. Will MRIs be what I need? Well, here's the problem with it. And I say it because they'll probably find something, but is it causing your pain? Is it truly the pain generator? Let me show you these stats right here. Just take a close look at this. I'm going to highlight these stats in the middle here. If you are even as young as 40s or 50s, Take a look at the disc degeneration here if you're a 50-year-old. Did you know that if you're 50 or older, even if you're pain-free, 80% of the time they're going to find disc degeneration? That's a lot. Or some of you have even been diagnosed with a disc protrusion. You might have heard that terminology or bulge. Look, these are still relatively high numbers in asymptomatics. And this is just a sample of some of the findings on an MRI. What does this mean? We can't put all our weight in just an MRI in terms of the pathology or what's causing the pain. We need to, we need to dig deeper. And these are five typical and traditional outdated approaches. These just aren't working. We thought they were, but they're not. At the top right of your screen, you'll see a lot of you have been prescribed favoring back extension. I'm gonna tell you why that's not a good idea. A lot of you have tried traditional core exercises like Russian twist or side obliques. Those aren't good ideas anymore. Those are outdated. And it's funny, a lot of our clients who have tried, in this case, traditional physical therapy, 
have come to me and said, well, they never looked at my hips. They never looked at my middle back. But these are key areas. We need to look at the whole body. I've had a lot of people that have even had big toe problems that have led to their back pain. I've got a specific uh, person I have in mind that I'll show you a little bit later in this. But we need to see functional movement. We need to see how it all gels together, where the root cause of the problem is. And even though your pain's in your low back, I'll tell you right now, that may not be the root cause of it. Two additional outdated approaches are people that consistently need manipulations of the low back. Um, to be honest, it creates instability in the low back area that's already kind of unstable. And so for a lot of you that have tried that, that doesn't work, that's often the case. You need to keep going back and back and back to getting manipulated. And a lot of you are seeking out massage therapists and you go once a week, maybe once a month. It just keeps the pain at bay, but you know deep down inside it's not resolving it. Here's our new low back pain approach that I really want you to pay attention to right here. And we'll dive deeper into the details in just a second, but the brief overlay is this. We need to help improve spinal flexion. We need to help improve curvature of the spine. Not that I want you to stand like that, but we're not gonna be improving by going into extension like you might have tried, and I'll show you why. We wanna encourage stabilization of the core, which you might have heard, but it's not as simple as you think, especially with some of the exercises that I'm seeing people prescribed. We need to do better. We need to incorporate a new functional movement analysis and the diagnostics within that. That's really, I feel like, the bread and butter to this new low back pain approach. Let's see how you move, and let's see what the back is required or not required to do, and who's doing your work on a day-to-day -day basis. We're not even talking about exercises. We need to be holistic. This mobility stability continuum you see here on the right side of your screen is a great example of that. Do we have the proper mobility and stability within each of the prerequisite joints? Not only in the low back, but above and below it, all the way up into it. Depends on your occupation and your exercises, your sport that you like to do. Do you abide by this mobility stability continuum? Can you pass our test? And let me just say this, strong legs, strong legs save backs. We need to have strong legs in order to help prevent back pain. So here's a quick understanding of why we prefer spinal flexion more than extension. Well, we need to help decompress the area of greatest compression, usually around L5 and S1. So this picture that you're seeing right here, they took a lateral view of it, okay? They're looking this way. And what we're really kind of taking a look at is how much space we have within each of these intervertebral discs. And you can see on the MRI right there, they're zooming in on that. And what you'll see um, on the right-hand side here, on the right-hand side, you'll see limited extension, okay? Or excuse me, they're, they're moving into extension with limited space in that. But look what happens when we're in flexion. You can see we have a lot more improvement and alignment we don't have the disc bulging like you can see underneath the red one, okay? And to be honest with you guys, it's not as simple as pushing the disc back in. Um, a lot of our clients have tried traditional physical therapy. They've been told by their physical therapist that they need to push the disc back in. Let me just tell you right now, it really doesn't work like that, okay? I've worked with too many people with low back pain. I've seen the research, it does not work like that. And what if you have stenosis, okay? What do you have? Uh, kind of an intervertebral foramen that's clogged with osteophytes. Extension is not going to work well for you guys, okay? And L5-S1 is by far the most common source of direct low back pain. Due to our anatomical makeup, we already have compression there. Why would we want to compress that area even more? We only have about 11 millimeters of space in that area. Why are we trying to compress that? Are we doing the core exercises the wrong way? The quick cliff note answer is yes. We need to perform exercise in a way that don't compensate with the low back. And a quick question for you guys is right now, type, type it in. Do you consider glutes a part of the low, excuse me, do you consider glutes a part of the core? Just type that in right now. I'll tell you right now, the synergy between the entire 360 degree corset connection of the obliques and the core into the backside, into the glutes is what we need. The core is so much more than just a six pack that you might think it is. We need to look at your functional movement analysis. How are you squatting? How are you lunging? How are you picking things up on a day to day basis? If we don't take care of this, the chances of your low back pain skyrocket. And I'm telling you right now, 
No one, and I mean no one, seems to be looking at this. People think they are, but they are not. We hold our clients to a very high standard when it comes to moving well. Let me just answer this question too. Dr. Koontz, I never did anything. You know, why is my back hurting? Well, if you move incorrectly, if I go back here, take a look on the left side of each of those pictures. If you move incorrectly, like both of those gentlemen happen to, if you consistently do that, this will add up. We have accumulative stressors to the low back. You will hit a threshold here. Um, the timeline below there is just to 200 days. But some of you have been moving incorrectly for 10, 15, 20 years or more. Do you think that adds up? Absolutely. Imagine the damage a car would have if it just pulled hard to the right for 20 years and if you just let it do that. This is a picture of us actually in the clinic using a laser. We turned the lights off. I told her to do a lunge while keeping the laser in between those two rods there. Do you think she learned the attentiveness to how to move when doing that? Absolutely. That was really eye-awakening for her to, to understand how am I moving? How do I keep my knee where it needs to be? And we can actually do this around the, the spine and the core as well. I just wanted you to know we, take, we pay uh, literally laser-focused attention to the quality of your movement to help prevent. And we pride ourselves on that to prevent the low back from coming back once we've knocked it out. Holistic approach is a must, everyone. Um, the hips are crucial to improving your low back. I need great mobility and great strength. There are very demanding joints in the body and we need both. This is just a demonstration of someone who we can help get back to doing squats. You don't necessarily even have to be interested in working out. I just need to know that you can squat well and squatting with a barbell is actually a really good general baseline place to be. Um, and heck, you may even have bad neck, shoulder, uh, knee pain, or in this case, this was a gentleman I was telling you about earlier. So on the left-hand side of your screen there, you can see he's kind of offset. He does not have good alignment, suffering from low back pain. We dug deeper into this, and I kept talking to him, asking him questions, and I go, why are you moving like this? And first off, he goes, I had no idea I was moving like that. We recorded him, showed him on our TV, and he was astounded. Uh, we dug deeper, and we found out he was actually having pain in his left big toe. So we deviated and moved his whole body around that, okay? And then on your right-hand side, we adjusted that. We worked through the toe, and voila, he didn't have back pain anymore when doing lunges, and his alignment was much better. So I thought that was just a great, really interesting example. Um, earlier, I mentioned strengthen the leg, save back. Now, here's an example of my squat. If you, if you decide that you'd like to come in and have us take a look, I'll literally show you a comparison from my squat to yours. Good spinal alignment here, using my legs, good depth. Um, Show on the left is an example of someone who dealt with low back pain. You can see that they're over-accentuating this movement with their low back. Their depth is very poor, and they're kind of cramming their spine into extension. This is not the result we needed. We had to work really hard uh, with this person and a lot of our clients to make sure that you can squat well. If you need to go down or sit you know, at a restaurant, go to the bathroom, you need, you need to be able to squat well. So guys, listen, these are three quick examples of commonly prescribed exercises. I'll go back just so you can read it. Um, that aren't really working for low back pain. And I'm going to show you right now what you can do instead. So here's a classic case of what I hear my clients have been prescribed with their low back. Now, while this might work acutely for those who have sciatica, you can see that this is not the end result that we need. It has a lot more compression, and it's not the end result game plan that we need for those who even have sciatica. This is only a band-aid on it. It compresses your spine even more. It inherently teaches your core to be lazy and it provides a salt of false sense of stability. It's only stable because you're just relying on the joints. You're just kind of hanging on them. You're not using your muscles. How long is that going to last you? Not very long to tell the answer. So instead of the prone press-ups, this would be my suggestion. I actually want to help stretch out your hip flexors. You can use a rope. We're looking for hip extension. You can see I'm trying to drive that hip back. That's going to actually help open up your spine and help you have better long-term results than that prone press-up. Here's a progression. It's a half kneeling stretch up against the wall. You're going to again feel that stretch in the front of the thigh. I'm engaging my glutes. I'm engaging my core. And I feel a really good stretch. We don't want to arch when we're doing this. So if you guys want to try this out, just make sure you're not arching like that. That's going to only reinforce the bad habits that we're looking that we're not looking for. Okay. So secondarily to that, 
I can't tell you how many times people have been prescribed this. A lying down, very basic, very rudimentary hamstring stretch. And here's the sad part. A lot of you already have great range of motion. So why are we, why are we doing this? Instead, let's teach you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just jump right into it real quick. Let's teach you how to properly hip hinge. So this is a hip hinge drill against the wall. Driving the butt back. Keeping the spine straight. Very functional move that I know you could go home and practice right now. Picking things up off the ground. You don't even have to think about it as an exercise per se or a strengthening exercise. But just, you know, this is a functional way to elongate the hamstrings. You'll feel a good stretch and you'll work on getting your butt back, getting your glutes involved. And that is way more helpful. I was just going to say the kind of the three things that I don't like about that hamstring stretch. It's often overprescribed um, in the sense that most people already have good length. It does not translate well into everyday movement. And it's often weak. And therefore, the hamstrings are tight. But if you do that exercise that I just showed you, you're going to be strengthening your hamstrings while you elongate it in a functional manner. Moving right along, you're going to be surprised, I think, on this one. But the, the third exercise I see often overprescribed and an extension biasness is this quadruped bird dog. As you can see here, I'm wobbly. I'm getting too much back extension. And I should say this, if you're going to do it like this, if you're going to do this exercise, you need to do it like this. The reality is most people aren't ready for this. This is in weeks four or six after we've hit some of our prerequisites that are mandatory. Well, what a difference there, huh? In the before and after. First time I was very wobbly, unstable, overarching my back. And the second time I engaged my glutes, engaged my core, and that was a lot better. So again, it's often performed just incorrectly. We need to start from scratch. It requires great glute firing more than your back muscles, and it requires great hip extension, which a lot of people don't have. This is my suggestion to you. If you've tried the bird dog, that I want you to do this instead. As you can see here, a lot of people start with too much of an arch in their spine. So instead, with this technique, you're going to engage your core, draw your lower back down to the ground, and I've got this belt. And I'm pulling underneath my core. And I'm seeing, can I keep my low back flush against the ground as I test myself and pull that belt or rope? And here I'm doing a good job. I'm holding down my core as I get leg movement. The progression, and some of you, a lot of you would not be ready for this right away, is can I bring both my knees to the chest while I keep my low back flat against that belt all the way up and down? Uh, and a lot of you are looking at like, wow, I've never tried anything like that. Uh, yes, that's a very great exercise, an eye-opening exercise. You're welcome to try this at home. We'll be sending you a replay. And for those who are watching the replay, you can go over it as much, as many times as you want. Uh, but it's a great way to help you bring that mind-body awareness as to what is my core actually doing. I thought I had a strong core, but why isn't it working for me? And that will help you check in on that. So guys, here's an ultimate, ultimate checklist for your lower back success. This is what you need to do, all right, in order to make sure... You not only stop the pain, but you continue to feel good. We need to teach you how to stand with a neutral spine, not an arch, with equivocal weight distribution. A lot of people are kind of leaning from one side to the other. Uh, this is an example. I actually just pulled this picture from the internet, but I thought it was a great example of a common problem that we see with one hip higher than the other. A lot of people think they need to go to the chiropractor to get that aligned. That's not the case. It's usually functional. It's usually a muscle like the quadratus lumborum that's too tight or just poor postural habits. I need you to, to engage with your glutes and your core when you're standing, not to rely on your vertebra, your pelvis, or the ligaments, okay? Which is a lot, a lot of people do. Again, we need to make sure that you can squat correctly. The barbell at a minimum is a good place to be in a good baseline. Um, this was a good example of a comparison of my lunge versus my client's lunge. We need to do better on lunges. I think lunges are daily requisite motion um, that we should have. If you have knee pain, it's probably because you've been doing lunges correctly. And if your knees hurt, then your back ends up being the one that has to do the work. Um, this isn't even really deadlifts. I was thinking about it. It's really just picking something up off the ground, right? The top one is an incorrect form of deadlifts. This particular person's up off their heels. They're using the back. On the bottom was a correct version, and that was a lifesaver for this person. So um, in terms of the core quick demonstration. These are just a, 
a few ideas of what I'd like to do uh, with you or what you could get started with. So planks, and I just kind of went over a few different ones. I'll play it again because I know we're moving quickly here. But I want you to just kind of think about what do all of these core exercises have in, in common? All right, that's a poor example form there of the plank. But, but what do you see? With all of these, I can tell you right now, my low back is not moving. There are various levels of progression here, but with all of them, my core stays the same, okay? And I really want you to pay attention to that because instead of the Russian twists or side obliques, we're moving and rotating our spine too much. It really was not meant to do that. It's meant to be stable and other areas like the arms and the legs move around it. The back should be stable. Now, I do think it's also crucial to have specific trigger points, muscle knots, and just tightness that you have in your low back loosened up. Sometimes you need a catalyst like ourselves to really get into those areas that you can't quite get into to help jumpstart the process. I personally have found astounding results getting into the QL, getting into the oblique insertions around there. People think it's actually their disc or their nerve, and I'm actually on their muscle, and it really surprises people. But I tell them it's a great result because we know we can help someone with muscular pain. It's really, it's tougher if we know like the vertebrae itself has damage, uh, but a lot of times it's just the muscles. And I can confirm that because I can feel it very superficially. I wanted to pick your brain about your hips, okay? Some of you stretch, 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 and don't get the results. Well, you'd be category B over here. You actually may need to rethink it in the way that you stabilize your core and you don't stretch as much. Someone over here on the left who is very tight, typically I find this in males more than females, but not always the case, uh, you do need to stretch. But it's so important that you know which category you're at. I've seen people waste years of their lives doing stretches and the same stretches every morning and every night with good intent, but it's not getting the results and they end up frustrated. So again, just reiterating what I just said. If you've been stretching for a long time, you need to rethink it. You probably need to work on stabilizing a little bit more. And I wanted to kind of leave you with this thought. You know, it does take time, it does take work and consistency to stay pain-free. And all I ask my clients after we give them a home exercise program, do this two to three times per week. Give yourself 30 minutes each time. Roughly three to four exercises that you know are helpful. We don't ever want to give people exercises just to do. We need to know and, and make sure that we've diluted and provided you exercises so that the exercises are the best and they're not going to waste your time. I can't, I can't say that enough. All right. So I did, like I said, um, wanted to let you guys know, just look right now down below. There's going to go ahead and be a checklist here for you to go through. So there's some bonus videos. There's a glute test. There's a plank saw core test. These are pretty fun and challenging. They're going to be very eye-opening for you to see if your glutes are strong enough to pass the test. Are they doing their job? Um, are the plank saws doing, you know, do you have a strong core? Do you really have a strong core? Can you do it like I demonstrate in that video? Um, and it's just like a little bit of an interactive checklist for you to think about in terms of your posture, your gait. So free to, feel free to click on that. I'll go ahead and shoot that to you via email. Um, and if you're watching this on the replay, you should be able to click on that as well. Okay, Whew. I don't know about you, but we've gone through a lot of stuff. So thank you guys so much for being with me still. And here's the reality. If you feel like you need a little bit more help, if you feel like you've tried the traditional routes um, and you want a specialist to take a look at your low back, if, you, if our model makes sense to you, I'm happy to offer you the special unique deal for a $49 full hour prime assessment. You can just click on the offer to get started and um, you can kind of take us up on that. So basically, this is what you'll get with our back pain assessment. Uh, first off, guys, it's so important that we understand your story. Uh, we tend to see people who have tried it all. Some of you have even tried um, back surgeries already. Maybe you've tried a round or two or multiple rounds of physical therapy. You've seen your chiropractor on and off for years. You've seen your massage therapist. You've seen rolfers. It's so important to, to us that we understand your story. Um, so when you click on the link to learn more about us, understand that we, we will want to get on the phone with you. We want to talk to you. We want to know what you've tried so that you come in on that first visit during our prime assessment 
that we've already got a pretty good understanding of what you've tried. We want to help you jumpstart this process, help you feel relief right away. Right away. We want you to know deep down in your heart that this works, that these guys are different. You know, Dr. Kuntz really knows this stuff and he understands my problems and he made me feel different. We're trying to accomplish that on the very first visit. Taking a deeper look into your posture like we talked about earlier and making sure I'm gonna get my hands on you and help you understand where you should be, which may feel very different than where you're at now. We're gonna help you squat if appropriate, lunge, stand on one leg. I'm gonna challenge your functional movement to see how you're moving. I'm gonna record you and show you what that looks like. We are gonna absolutely go through a strength assessment, a joint assessment to see how the joints feel to tell you, are you a person who's very stiff or are you someone who's very hypermobile? Um, and it may be surprising to you to determine what I feel like that is. It may be different than what you thought it was. We want you to leave knowing deep down inside that we know what the root cause of the problem is. And it may be different than just saying, well, you have a disc bulge. It's well, like, John, you can't move like that. You can't lunge like that. You can't sit like that. You can't drive like that. You can't get in and out of your car like that. You can't sleep like that. You can't walk like that. Your core's too weak. You have no hip extension. Your left leg is 20% weaker than your right leg. You get the drift? There's so many variables that people are not looking at that we can really start to dive into on the first assessment. But understand, we are always assessing. We don't just say, hey, we're gonna head to that mountain and then we're there. We are constantly learning the terrain. I'm learning about you throughout that entire process. Also too, just understanding your do's and don'ts is really important. What are you doing or not doing? Uh, in this case, what are you doing on an everyday basis that's actually causing pain that you had no idea? Um, I had a gentleman the other day, he's, he's just like, I have no idea why it hurts um, when I get into my car. I guess it'll be a test to see how well I did. And I go, well, let's go into your car. Let, let's go outside right now and let's see how you did. I couldn't believe the way he got in his car. We were kind of having a laugh about it. I was like, where did you learn to do that? And he's like, I, I have no idea. I guess I've always done it like that. Uh, and it was really bad. Um, we made the correction. He didn't have any pain on the way home. Got up the correct way out of his car. When he got home, he didn't have any pain. Right? How many massages is that worth to you? Right? How many times is it worth going to get your back cracked when we could have just literally walked into the car, learned by a specialist on how to move in and out of the car? Just simple stuff. Right? I don't even teach a whole lot of uh, crazy stuff. Let's just do the basics well. This might be an example of what your plan would look like. Um, we want to give you a good guesstimation exactly what this plan would look like. Now this would be, by the way, something I would probably give to you after your second visit. The, it's just too much information and I need to see how you're responding from our first visit before I could say something like this. But this is kind of a common uh, general route, I would say. We tend to see people once a week for a full hour when we do it. Um, you can see here, this was prescription was for four months about 12 visits uh, where this person needed kind of a combination of some hands-on tissue-based visits. Uh, they need to work on their corrective-based exercises, which means not only improving your mobility, but your motor control, knowing at where you're at in space, how are you squatting, how are you lunging. And then we really like to give people kind of a bulletproof workout program, whether that's a morning and night routine for you, a home workout, going to the gym, etc. So um, again, thank you so much for being here. If you want to learn even more about us, check us out on our two main social media profiles at Prime Movement uh, or go to our website at primemovement.com. You can even fill out a form there. Um, but I really appreciate you for being here and I really look forward to the opportunity to work with you.